Hello dear students, today we are continuing with the Jedi Star Wars Leadership Academy. We are going to review this great character of all times, the most famous of the first Star Wars saga, Han Solo. If you are not familiar with him, I will redirect a video which you can see his characteristics and why he was so beloved in that first Star Wars saga, the great Harrison Ford. I will put the link in the description. Set so this, let's begin. Han shot first. The ethics leadership of a first strike. It's an article and research by Deborah Akai and Emily Akai. Welcome. As usual, business as usual, this is Victor and Rom. Your assigned leadership and personal development lecturer. Please let me know in the comments what do you think about this Star Wars Leadership Academy? Do you like it? Do you think you can learn something about it or not? That said, let's begin. A first strike is an action that causes harm to someone who has not yet caused harm to you, but who may cause harm to you in the future. Whether the future is imminent or eventual, in international law, a military first strike against another country is allowed when the threat presented is imminent, overwhelming, and requires immediate action, leaving no moment for deliberation. But what about conflicts between people, not nations? Sometimes participants in an impending dispute also may choose the first strike. First strike in interpersonal disputes might look like an unexpected attack or mean spirited sabotage or escalating the fight before any dispute has actually materialized. Whether first strikes are wise or useful in interpersonal conflict is a question of strategy and leadership, and of course, ethics. In exploring the ethical dimensions aligned with our leadership and values in our Star Wars Leadership Academy, this lecture takes as its starting point one of Star Wars most iconic scenes and characters. Han Solo facing off against the bounty hunter Gretel in the Mos Eisley Cantina. Only Han survives, but the way he survives has been the source of controversy for decades. I will try to put the scene on the comments. We use the scene and the tumultuous fan debate around it to address the question. Our first strikes even ethical? The encounter with Greedo. We first meet Han Solo in the city meeting of Moss Esley. Han is a mercenary smuggler with ties to the gangster Jabba the Hutt. He's cocky, self-assured and reckless. He generally tries to talk his way out of a bad situation, which we which he succeeds evenly, but often when quick talking fails or when the conversation gets boring, he'll blast anything from intercom systems to enemies. After meeting with Luke and Obi-Wan, Han is confronted by Greedo, blaster drawn. Han and Greedo sit down at a corner table as Greedo boasts about collecting the bounty that Java has on Han's head, Han secret removes his weapon from its holster. In the original theoretical release, 
the exchange ends as follows with the Rodian language translated Rido, you can tell that to Java he may only take your ship Han, over my dead body Rido, that's the idea I've been looking forward to this for a long time Han, yes, I'll bet you have from under the table, Han shoots Greedo dead. He gets up and walks out of the bar, tossing a coin to the bartender and apologizing for the mess. Later editions of the Star Wars movies have altered this scene to show Greedo firing before Han. In, and to show Han and Greedo firing at the same time. Presumably, this change were intended to provide greater justification for Han killing Greedo, which suggests that the filmmakers were concerned that Han may not have sufficient justification to shoot Greedo in the first place. With this in mind, we will consider the original version, the ones most fans swear by Han shot first. Was this first strike ethical? To address this question, we'll draw on perspectives on the ethics of harm and self-defense from international law, criminal law, foreign policy, and also philosophy, which leadership always uses and takes knowledge from it. And lots and lots of Star Wars. Let's begin. The Caroline test. When it comes to the ethics of the first strike, one starting point is the Caroline test, a 19th century international law doctrine. It's important to mention that most of the international law doctrine was developed during the 19th century, and the precursor of it was the Washington Treaty in 1871 in which the US and Britain had a dispute over Canada fishing territories and areas. And the event was all solved in an international court in Europe. So it was a great precursor of international law. The current test states that one nation can strike first against another nation if the strike meets three conditions necessity, imminence, and proportionality. In other words, a first strike is justified if it is absolutely necessary to prevent the other side from striking. The danger must be so imminent that there is no time to think about alternatives or respond in any other way. Finally, the response should be proportional to the imminent attack. Although Han and Greedo are not nation states, the Caroline test is a good place to start when considering their encounter. Greedo is brandishing a weapon and making verbal threats does Greedo pose an imminent and overwhelming threat, leaving Han no other choice and no time to think about what else he may do? Is it necessary for Han to shoot Greedo to get away? Is killing rather than injuring Greedo a proportional response to the threat that he poses? The answers to these questions are not immediately clear. What makes these questions difficult? is that the answer turn on one's perspective. Imminence, necessity, and proportionality are all subjective. From, from Han's point of view, a deadly attack may have seemed imminent, and therefore his reaction was necessary. But from Greedo's point of view, he may have assumed that Han would come quietly in a public place, like the cantina, and no violence would be required. The current test requires 
that we make assumptions about the intentions of the opposing party and these assumptions may be incorrect. The audience may feel the imminent threat that greed opposes to Han and it is perhaps reasonable to think that Han likely expects that Greedo will pull the trigger. But neither the audience nor Han can know for sure whether Greedo would have killed Han then and there. Complicating the problem of different perspectives in the challenge of dealing with ambiguous terms, in the Carolyn test, the principle of proportionality means an attack must reflect the scope, nature, and gravity of the opposing attack. And the principle of necessity protects against the use of excessive measures. If proportional means equivalent, then perhaps can Han is justified in killing Greedo. Greedo, with his blaster raised, looks ready to kill Han. An equivalent response for Han is to match Greedo's threat by shooting first. But if proportional means sufficient only to prevent the imminent attack, then simply shooting Greedo in the leg and running away would have been enough, as opposed to outright killing him. Raising the long debate question of whether intentionally killing an opponent is ever a justifiable act of self-defense. And let's make here a little context of the Caroline test. In 1841, the US Secretary of State Daniel Webster wrote to the British government and accused British soldiers of an inappropriate first strike against the US steamship Caroline. That is the name where it comes from. The British claim the act was in self-defense. In his letter of response to the British government, Webster laid out a threefold test as a measure of justified self-defense, noting that the British action just failed the test. The Carolyn test also distinguishes between preemptive and preventative first strikes. On the, the Carolyn test, a preemptive strike responds to an imminent threat and requires immediate action of self-defense to prevent the opponent's attack. In contrast, a preventive strike is one that responds only to a potential threat that may cause harm at some point in the future. Generally speaking, preemptive strikes are more ethically sound than preventative strikes, given that many cultures and legal systems recognize the need for self-defense. If Greedo poses an imminent danger to Han, one that is an immediate threat, when he brand brandishes his blaster and threatens to heal Han, then Han shooting Greedo qualifies as a preemptive strike. But if Greedo only poses a potential threat, one that may or may not happen in the future, then Han first strike is preventative. As you can see, this legal approach as modeled by the Caroline test does not provide a definite answer as to whether Han was ethically justified in shooting Greedo. Sometimes comparing different examples can help in discussions of ethics. So let's look at another example of Han shooting first. The encounter with Darth Vader. In the Empire Strikes Back, land local reason reminds Han and his companions for light refreshments. As Han enters the dining room, he sees Darth Vader seated at the head of the table. Han instantly draws his blaster and shoots. Darth Vader uses the force to deflect the shots and snatch away Han's weapons before calmly saying, we would be honored if you would join us. Consider our discussion so far about the ethics of first strike, is Han justified to shoot first at Darth? On the Caroline test, and given that Darth Vader is one of the most powerful users of the Force in the galaxy, Han use of a blaster against Darth Vader appears both proportional 
unnecessary. Jet Bader arguably poses no imminent threat to Han in this scene. After all, Darth Vader is sitting at a dining table. He has expressed no ill will and has now threatened anyone's life. Boba Fett and the stormtroopers have not yet appeared. In fact, we soon learned that Darth Vader actually has no intention of killing Han in the dining room because Vader wants to use Han to test the carbon freezing chamber. So what justifies Han first strike in this case? For one, from Han's point of view, he may read the situation as being imminently threatening even when no actual threat exists. Beyond that, we may consider that given the story between the characters, the threat of severe harm indeed exists. And in fact, after Han is captured, he is imprisoned and tortured before being frozen in carbonate and sent to Java the Hot. Still in the moment the doors opens and reveals Darth Vader at the table, Han does not know whether Darth Vader immediate intentions are to harm or kill Hans or his companions. Working with what he knows at that point, is Han first strike unethical or is it just an over the top reaction to an invitation from his future in laws? Recall that the Caroline test drew a distinction between preemptive, facing immediate danger, and preventative, could face potential danger at some point later on. First strikes. In contrast to Han's interaction with Greedo, in which Han's first strike is arguably preemptive, his strike against Darth Vader appears preventative. When evaluating preventative strikes, the Bush drug doctrine provides useful insight. In 2002, the Bush doctrine was established as a national security strategy of the United States. The strategy allowed the US to proactively intervene against states or terrorists that were perceived as threats to the security of the United States or its allies even if the perceived threat had not yet yielded a direct attack on the United States. In contrast to the Caroline test, the Bush doctrine attempted to legitimize certain preventative strikes by defining them as preemptive self-defense. The doctrine justified the use of force to eliminate a threat before an enemy attacks, even before the specific time and place of the enemy's attack was known, thus eliminating Caroline's requirements of actual self-defense. When Han Solo encounters Darth Vader, he does not know when or where or how Darth Vader will attack. What Han does know is that Darth Vader poses a serious threat to himself, his friends and the entire rebel alliance. He's showing first Darth Vader from across the table is arguably a preventative attack done in preemptive self-defense. It is important to note that the Bush Doctrine's expansive definition of preemptive self-defense has been roundly criticized for decades. Its overreach and its potential for disproportionate and unwarranted harm. The doctrine reflects broader social attitudes toward the balance between one's own safety and the lives of others, at least in the United States. Further, the doctrine's endorsement of preventative action in the context of war has been mirrored in a smaller, more local context. Stand your ground. Statutes, for example, allow a person to use deadly force against another person when they reasonably believe that the other person poses a serious but not necessarily imminent threat of harm against them. 
Such statutes have redefined self-defense in these jurisdictions because they stipulate that people who feel threatened are not expected to retreat in any way. Instead, those who feel threatened are justified in using deadly force to defend themselves. Both the Caroline test and the British, sorry, the Bush doctrine provides analytical frameworks for assessing hand first strikes on Greedo and on Darth Vader. But these frameworks do not explain how we choose ethically when it comes to first strikes in conflict, particularly interpersonal conflict. Simply put, what makes Han first strike against Darth Vader seem more acceptable and ethical than his first strike at Greedo, who was a much more imminent threat, arguably requiring preemptive action? Why was one scene edited and the other left untouched? Context matters. It's a period of civil war. As experts in international law and conflict resolution, we start with law and foreign policy when considering ethical questions around first strike. Although our focus is usually nation states, our analysis often provides useful insight into the ethical dimensions of interpersonal conflicts as well. For example, drawing from our discussion above, some key considerations in assessing the ethicality of a first strike in interpersonal conflict include the following. 1. Difference in perspective. People in disputes often have widely different perspectives around what is happening, who did what, and who poses a threat to whom. Choosing to strike first without at least acknowledging these differences is ethically problematic because it willfully ignores the possibility, valid understandings and assumptions of the other side. Similarly, we need to consider someone's reasonable perspective when assessing ethically. Han genuinely believed that Greedo would kill him makes a difference in whether we think his first strike was warranted. 2. Definitional ambiguities and misunderstandings Relatedly, parties in conflict may not have the same understanding of the rules or norms in effect. The word respect, for example, may mean different things to different people. Dialogue is often necessary to explore these differences and avoid exacerbating the conflict. Exploiting definitional ambiguities and misunderstandings to rationalize or justify bad behavior, including first strikes, is unethical. For example, imagine that Greedo believed that sitting at a table together precluded violent action between enemies, similar to when pirates have a moratorium on fighting during negotiations. Han either didn't agree, see different in perspectives above, or perhaps he took advantage of Rito's belief, seeking the upper hand when he knew his opponent was unguarded. 3. Social norms and attitudes. How people fight and negotiate and make decisions reflect at least in part prevailing notions of acceptable and effective approaches. These prevailing notions do not necessarily justify first strikes, but they map help assess their ethicality. Our perception of Hans' first strike in the cantina may have been different if instead of being confronted by a bounty hunter, he was confronted by a republic officer or a small child. The norms around haunted hunter are more conducive to violence, and these norms affect our understanding of the ethically of Hans' behavior. A meta factor here 
is context. When Han tries to shoot Darth Vader, he does so within the larger context of war. Here on Earth, this context matters. International law includes both human rights law and humanitarian law. Human rights law applies at all times and under all circumstances, while humanitarian law applies specifically during periods of armed conflict. One tenet of humanitarian laws is permission to use force and take a life under a certain conditions. This permission acknowledges that violence is inherent in war. In Star Wars, war is omnipresent. The first words that appear in A New Hope opening role offer a key insight into the entire culture of Star Wars. It's a period of war, civil war in this case. This context sets the stage for acts of violence. Engaging in a context-based analysis explains why we are not shocked by Han immediately shooting at Darth Vader. Context may also explain why some people are uncomfortable with Han shooting Greedo first, since the stakes of that conflict are not on an intergalactic scale but are instead about collecting debts for an alien crime lord. In other words, one first strike is for the greater good, for example, protecting the alliance, and the other first strike is for more selfish reasons, avoiding personal responsibility. The notion of context and the greater greed, good raises another ethical consideration, namely the familiar debate between utilitarianism and the ontology. Is the killing of one person justifiable if it is in the service of a noble goal, like saving other lives? Or is killing always wrong, no matter the circumstances? A utilitarian might argue that Han's attempt to kill Darth Vader is justified, because it could effectively save the lives of millions of people. A deontologist will focus instead on the immorality of taking even one's life, arguing that no number of future lives saved is worth the cost of one life taken. In Star Wars, both utilitarian and deontological arguments arise at various points, with the deontological emphasis on the goodness of the Alliance and the utilitarian understanding of the work that must be done to protect the Alliance. On this philosophical view, Han shooting first at Greedo raises ethical concerns, because this action may not be defensible from either the ontological or utilitarian perspectives. In a film about good versus evil, having a morally bankrupt hero could from the vantage point of the people telling the story, he really disrupt the narrative. Therefore, that scene had to go. Similar logic explains why the Cloud City scene remains unchanged, since Han would be seen as justified to strike first at Darth Vader based on principles of the greater good and the potential positive impact on the galaxy overall. Said this, let's conclude. And this type of conclusions is the ones which I would like to see in and on your weekly activities. Harvard with some research. Harvard professor Joshua Green has written that when we don't know what we feel as we do, we make up a plausible sounding story and go with it. The risk of deciding whether Han Solo is justified in his first strikes, either in killing Greedo or attempting to kill Darth Vader without imminent provocation, is that in the end we like Han Solo. We want him to be the good guy, which makes it easier to find reasons to justify his actions. When we want to cheer for our side, whether it's a nation state or Han Solo, 
we are quicker to justify the necessity of violent acts we would otherwise find disgusting or immoral. Accordingly, perhaps we are unable to objectively judge Han Solo by the same standard when he shoots at Darth Vader as when he shoots at Greedo. With this in mind, Professor Green points out that when faced with moral controversy, we need to use both our moral instincts as well as our careful and thoughtful consideration of the mere moral issues and also leadership and followership issues. When our emotional moral compasses point in opposite directions, they can be both right. In other words, we must remain open to visiting and revisiting ethical choices in conflict, especially when those choices do harm or violence to others. When Han shoot first, he raised a lot of questions that still hover in the smoky air of the most aisle cantina. Said this, please review the video on analysis of Han Solo character so you can have a greater context on this activity. And then we will be working in teams like the first leadership academy activity test that we had for our partial test. So this, any question, please feel free to contact me by email. I will be glad to assist, correct, or just make some beautiful words about your activities. This was Victor M. Romo, your assigned lecturer for leadership and personal development. Thank you for listening, viewing, and goodbye. Please comment. I would like to see your comments on the comment section on the YouTube video. Goodbye. Have a wonderful day.